Why is there a Snyder Cut of Justice League? You may think you know the full story, but there's a deeper layer we're going to explore in this video. Hey guys, it's Hannah Salik, the head of video here at Cinema Blend. Of course, with our managing editor and author of the Release the Snyder Cut book, Sean O'Connell. How's it going, Sean? I'm good. I'm supporting my... Uh, so this shirt was made specifically for the New York Comic Con push when they did the Times Square billboard. And uh, one of the members who was part of that movement floated me this shirt. And so the, I, this is one of my proudest ones. Best of the best. Last week, we talked a lot about um, how part of the marketing challenge that Zack Snyder's Justice League will face is just getting casual audiences to understand that this is not your regular director's cut of a movie. And so we figured what better way to try and educate those people. Teach me. Then by kind of going back to where it all started and discussing the real story behind why Zack Snyder even left Justice League in the first place. So Jean, I'm sure a lot of people watching this have already um, read your article on Cinema Blend, but I figured we could break it down a bit further in this video so that maybe people can share this with their more casual audience type friends as kind of like a one-stop shop of like, here's the full story. I can teach you. And in turn, you can teach everyone. I would love to. So, uh, where do we, so where do we even start? That's, where would yeah. you like to begin? Great question. I think it might be helpful to just kind of go back to 2017 and just talk about what even happened. Okay, so the Hollywood Reporter was the one to break this story, and essentially they had quotes from Zach and Debbie in their reporting. Um, where they came out with the explanation as saying that their daughter Autumn had died by suicide and Zach was going to use this opportunity to step away. In that story, Zach admitted that he did try to go back and work on the film for a little while, but then realized that he was needed at home with his family and made the decision, according to him, to leave the project, which left the studio with a situation of, okay, that's fine, but we still have a movie that needs to get finished. As, as much as that's not like the tactful thing to discuss at the moment, you're still racing to meet a deadline uh, on the business side. So they had announced at that point they were going to hire Joss Whedon to come in and replace. Now, this doesn't even have anything to do with how whatever happened with the movie from that point on. It all comes down to this conversation with, because people started to to guess, like, did the studio want Zach to leave around that time anyway? Um, were they, because we were reporting that they were somewhat unhappy with the reaction uh, and the response to uh, Batman versus Superman Dawn of Justice and that potentially the studio wanted to go in a different direction. We also went to the set of Justice League and heard from Zack directly that he was going for a lighter tone with his Justice League anyway. But, you know, of course, fans use that opportunity to sort of speculate, was Zack pushed out? Did the studio use this family tragedy as an opportunity to get to an end game that they wanted to get to, which was a replacement director? You spend all this time sort of speculating. You know that ultimately what happened is that he steps away from the film and that the film was then handed over to another director. And that's that's what happened. That's the reality. Jesus. Do you want to read what Zach actually told you in the book or do you want to kind of paraphrase that takes this a little bit farther? No. Uh, because I think it's so important to have his words speak for themselves, I, I would like to read exactly what he said. And I'll even give it context uh, for people who haven't seen the book yet, because the book is coming out on March 1st. Uh, the way that I sort of phrased this question to him wasn't, um, did you get fired or did the studio you know, want you to leave at that point? I'm more asked in this sense, because if Zach got fired... Um, then it makes sense that the studio would immediately have a replacement to put in. But if if the studio was really in a situation where Zach came to him and said, like, we've had this family tragedy, I need time. Um, I asked Zach if the studio ever gave him the uh, indication that they were willing to move the release date back to give him the time that he would need, you know, to essentially say... Uh, yes, we totally understand that you need time to grieve and we want you to be able to come back and finish what you started, which personally uh, is the way that I think things probably should have been handled. And a lot of this is hindsight because, you know, we have no clue how it would have worked out if they were able to move the release date. And I get into reasons in the book as to why I think that they chose not to move the release date. But Zach basically said, um, when I asked him if they ever gave him the opportunity to move back, he said no. Um, not that he can remember. He doesn't think that that conversation ever took place where they gave him the chance to move the movie back. Mm. But then also he went on to elaborate 
to say that even if they had kind of given him that option, that he had been by that point already waging so many arguments and battles with the studio executives over what I can only assume is the tone and the direction of the, the movie and the franchise that he says now, quote, I was just kind of done with it. I was in this place of knowing that my family needs me more than this bullshit and I just need to honor them and do the best I can to heal that world. I had no energy to fight the studio and fight for the movie. Literally zero energy for that. I really think that's the main thing. I think there's a different world where I stayed and kind of tried. And I'm sure I could have, and he pauses and then he goes, because every movie is a fight, right? I was used to that. But I just did not have the energy. There was no fight in me. I'd been beaten by what was going on in my life and I just didn't want to, I didn't care to. That was kind of where I was. So that implies to me that he was going through the process of battling for his vision of the movie, which suggests to me that behind the scenes, the studio executives were forcing changes on him. And this gets into what Jeff Johns and John Berg potentially were trying to do uh, and the rewrites and, and changes that they wanted to get. Primitive beings. I think it was Jeff Johns who wanted Whedon to come in. And, and mm. maybe behind the scenes, Jeff Johns Maybe, I'm saying this is maybe. Maybe behind the scenes, Jeff Johns was saying, I even have a good replacement to the Warner Brothers executives. It's an ugly, gross situation, no matter which way you paint it. And that's why, like, I don't think any way that we settle on how it was resolved is going to make anybody feel better. Okay. Like, it was still just a horrible situation that had no great alternative in sight outside of the only really high road I think you could take is to say, in the moment, Okay, we totally understand. We back you as our filmmaker. We're going to push the release date. Take as much time as you need. We'll be back in summer of 2018 and uh, and we'll complete your vision. But they didn't do that. That's rude. You said in your article, going back to Zach's quote, that that caught you off guard. Do you want to kind of mm -hmm. elaborate on the why behind that? Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, for him to call this universe and the act of, the fil of filmmaking it bullshit, you know, it, he's right. I mean, he's right in, in the grand scheme of a familial tragedy. And, and the way that I sort of, Hannah, this chapter, I wrote a chapter about Autumn in the book and I wrote a chapter about, you know, the Snyders and, and them having to walk away. And I, I found it really difficult to even approach it because having a conversation about the loss of a child, you know, associated with anything comic book movie is just, they don't even, they're not even on the same page. Like there's no way to even compare it. And it, and it's, it's still really uncomfortable for me to talk about it in the context of a comic book movie because it feels like it's cheapening it or taking away from it in some way, shape, or form. And I don't, I mean, I'm the father of two boys. I would never, ever, ever want to do that. But it was, that's the first time that I'd heard Zach talk about like, yeah, man, everything with the movie is was just stupid. You know, I mean, for him to call it bullshit was just like, it wasn't important. Please don't make me do this. Zach needed a break at that point. And, you know, we can't go back and change the reality of the situation. He couldn't be there anymore for it. And for him to candidly say that, like, he just had no fight left in him at that point. Like, who would? You know, who would want to stick around to, you know, right. you don't want to do anything in that situation. You know, I, I would assume. I would assume you don't want to do anything in that situation. And so uh, to hear him be that candid about it, I mean, it was one super refreshing to me because it sort of showed that how far he's come along on his own personal journey, that he got the fight back, you know, like he, he got that resilience back to say that like, this is going to be closure for me. I'm thrilled that he has that. You came back. You came back. And I think for me reading that quote yesterday, just really shed a light on like how stupid this whole like, well, he was really fired and like the, like people wanting to take that narrative of, you know, the drama behind the scenes about the DCEU and the Zach's direction and all that. It's like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like none no. of that matters. And I think it's a shame that um, a lot of people still think that it does. I, I'll say, I'll say this. I do think it matters to, in this sense, like, Yes, he got derailed from having his vision and the way that the movement fights for artistic integrity, I'm thrilled that they got him the opportunity to finish that yes. that vision. Thank you is not enough what you did. It matters for that reason. But when people come out and say like, that's not how it happened. If anybody's trying to come out and say, that's not how it happened, um, you better have a damn good source because the other side of this story is being told by Zack Snyder himself. And the way that I, 
phrased it earlier is that there are only a handful of people who are in on these conversations. And one of the sides of the story is coming directly from Zach, who's telling you how it went down. So if you're telling me that you have an alternative version of that story, you know, share now who you have. Because if it's a friend of a friend of a friend, then stop talking. Like, honestly, I, you're, I, you're calling the man a liar, essentially. And you better have a really great reason for doing that. Because I don't understand why you would come out that strong against him. The fever, the rage, the feeling of powerlessness that turns good men cruel. That feels like a really good place to end the video, but I just want to broaden things a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> sure, sure. To me, this kind of all signals to what casual audiences are still failing to understand just about the Snyder Cut movement. And you said something in your article, again, that I want to bring up, and you said the story of the release of Snyder Cut movement is unlike anything I have ever seen in my 20 plus years as a film journalist. And that, to me, is very striking. <laughs> Uh, it, well, it is. I mean, it's true. I've never seen a, a group of fans rally behind uh, any cause, uh, let alone something that I think is this important. Um, and it goes beyond it. If I can convey anything in the book and if I can convey anything going up to the release of this movie, it's so much more than just the movie at hand. And the movie will exist and there will be casual DC fans that will enjoy it or not enjoy it. And the movie can exist on that level and we can pick it apart for whether it works or doesn't work. But on a much higher level, there's this, like the victory, and this is part of why I kind of say this in these videos, like the victory is getting the cut before you even see what the cut is. Like you guys, to frame it in this context, Zach is telling you that like he lost this movie at one of the most difficult points in his life and his fans collectively decided um no we're not gonna let that happen you know like we really support this guy and we deeply support his family debbie's a producer alongside all of this um and we're gonna dedicate the our lives to making sure that that wrong against you is rectified we're with you till it's done it's about getting that vision put back together because they felt that bad decisions were made along the way We've been able to confirm a few of those bad decisions. We're still a little bit mysterious about some of the other bad decisions that have happened. But the fact that this is coming is, is again, unlike anything I've ever seen before. Because, first off, you just don't see major blockbusters change horses midstream like this. It's financially and creatively stupid <laughs> to, to well, do that. Well, um, Solo, a Star Wars story, did that too, right? It did, and and I the the investigator part of my brain wants to know what happened on Lord Miller's version. So that curiosity can prop up on other projects where you're like, hey, what happened? Why why did that change? Um, but I've never seen anything like this sustained push uh, for this type of release, and to also see how Zach backed it and then flip it on the other side to learn like the human element of the people who were involved mm -hmm. in the movement and why they individually chose to do what they did uh, and the things that motivated them and the emotional connections that they had, not just to Zach, but to his material, to these DC characters. Like once you lay it all out, it's, it remains one of the most spectacular stories that that uh, that I've ever seen. And, and I'm thrilled to be able to tell a sliver of it. These exceptional beings live among us. Just to clarify for anybody who knows, because uh, that Zach stepped away from Justice League, due to his daughter Autumn uh, dying by suicide, the Release the Snyder Cut movement has made it part of their mission that anything that they do to raise awareness for the release of the cut over the past three years that they've been fighting for it has been also to raise funds for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, uh, an organization that many members of the, of the community have supported and that the Snyders have voiced their support for over the years. They love the fact that, uh, that you know the movement has sort of adopted the AFSP. AFSP loves the fact that the Snyder Cut movement does as many things in terms of um, merchandise sales and and if they're going to raise money to buy a billboard someplace, they will raise the same amount of money to make it a donation to AFSP. It's been a terrific arm of the entire campaign. And so from the minute I started the book, I'm, I'm told people right up front, and I am standing by this, that a, a portion of the proceeds raised from sales of the book are going to go to AFSP because I believe in it and, and I think that every dollar helps. Taking a lead from the movement, I like it. <laughs> they they taught me a lot and opened my eyes. So, they are a very uh, diverse group of charitable people. Yes, they are. <laughs>
Men are still good. I think that's pretty much everything about just the story behind why. And to learn more, you're going to have to read Sean's book. I'm not going to spoil everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we're not, listen, this is not, I don't want this to become a big advertisement for the book. But um, No, but I'm, I just want to make it clear to everybody, I'm making Sean promote his book. I'm yeah, yelling. We are, <laughs> we're enamored with the Snyder Cut movement because of all that I learned personally uh, in researching them. And I'm thrilled that Hannah's come along for the ride and, and, and learned so much about this as well, too. So hopefully you guys are learning a couple of things. Uh, about the movement as we complete all these videos. And hopefully, by the time we get together next week, we'll have a second trailer for Zack Snyder's Justice League. <laughs> I can't cross my fingers. Do you know that? I have to, like, what? move my... No, I can't. That's I don't so know weird. I'm... Oh, my yeah. God. You learned that about me today. Oh, no, I can't do that. <laughs> well, that's more enlightening than the whole video. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we will see you guys back here next week uh, for more Snyder Cut content. Thank you so much for joining us here on Cinema Blend. Make sure you go down and hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you back here next week.